So continuing on with the factoring portion of this, and remember the factoring is just the reverse of what you were doing in the multiplying section. So your goal here is to break these up as much as possible, and it kind of goes in the order that we did them in the chapter. So remember the first thing we did is we looked and we said, can we pull anything out of both of these? Is there anything that's in both 12 and 15? And you'd say, yes, a 3 goes into both of them. And then you have to put back in what you need in order to get the 12x, which would require a 4 and an x, and a minus, and you also need to get that 15, so you would have a 5. And remember, these are all checkable by just multiplying. Number 23, what's in common to all these terms? Well, 14, 28, and 21 all have a 7 in them. Also, all those terms have an n cubed and an n squared and an n, they all have an n in them. So when we divide that out or factor it out, when we remove the 7 from the 14, it gives us 2. And when we remove the n from the n cubed, it gives us n squared. It's the reverse of what you were doing on the other page. Then we need a minus. We need to create the 28n squared. So we need a 4n. And then to create the 21, all we need is the 3. And again, you can always just multiply that back in to check. Number 24, what do these terms have in common? Well, the numbers out front are those coefficients, both have a 5 in them. And both terms have some b's in them, but I can only take one out because otherwise I'll rob this one. And let's see, it looks like I can take four c's out of each without cutting any short. And now we have to decide what goes back in. Well, we need the 15, so we need a 3. We need two b's, so we need another b. And we're good on the c's. We need a plus. And to get the 20, we'll need a 4. We have the B already, and we need five C's, which we need, means we need another C. And again, you can always check these by multiplying it back in. Number 25, you look at that one and you say, well, there's nothing I can take out of each of these terms. Well, this is that process with the trinomials where you have to try to, for lack of a better term, unfoil it. And we liked it when it led right here, when a 1, because all we had to focus on was this last term. And how can we get a 9? Well, out of 9 and 1 are 3 and 3. And you can see this is the winner. And let these signs help you. They're going to both be positive. So we'd say it's r plus 9 times r plus 1. Again, checkable by foiling. Number 26. Again, we're just leading in a 1 right here, so we don't need to worry about the front term. We've got to look at things that make the 24. Well, you've got your 4 and your 6, your 3, your 8. And once you think of that one, you should say, oh, okay, I got it. Again, let these signs guide you. If I have to multiply to equal a negative, it means one of the two numbers is negative, and I have to add up to a negative 5, which means it's the 8 that's got to be negative. Notice these multiply to equal negative 24, and they add up to a negative 25. So when I break that one apart, I'd have g minus 8 and a g plus 3. And remember, the order of your factors doesn't matter. And again, check by foiling. Number 27, just to save some time, I'm going to go off to the side here. The factors of 48 that I can create that positive 2 with would be 6 and 8. Again, let this sign help you. Because it's negative, 1 needs to be negative. And because they need to add to a positive 2, it'd be the 6 that has to be negative. So I break it into m minus 6 times m plus 8. And again, factor it to check it. We are going to allow you to skip this one, so I'm going to cross that one out. Let's go to 28. Now this is the long kind. I'm going to have you star this one. This should also go on the other sheet, just so you have some practice with it. Remember that when we can't pull anything out, look for it. Can't do it. And we don't lead in a 1. Then we've got that process where we multiply. We say we've got a 15. And what factors of 15 can create the 16? And you'd say 15 and 1. And again, because the 16 is negative, we'd have to add, they'd both be negative. Let this help you too. Two negatives make a positive. So we're going to split that one up into, I'm going to probably run into number 31 here, but that's okay. So the 3d squared we're not going to mess with. Our minus 16d we're going to split into minus 15d and a minus 1d that we decided to use for our factors. And then on the tail end here, I have the plus 5. Remember, I haven't done anything. I've taken negative 16 and split it up into these two parts. Then we group and we group and we factor. What goes into both of those terms? A 3D. What would be left back in? A D minus 5. What comes out of the next terms? And when we've said when nothing comes out, you pull out a 1. And again, take the sign with you. And I have another D minus 5. This is always checkable at this stage. 
And now we have a common factor of d minus 5 that we will pull out, leaving a 3d minus 1. So d minus 5 times 3d minus 1. Again, I would suggest you FOIL to check it, and you'll get this right back. Off to number 29. 29, be careful because don't break our very first rule with these, which is can anything come out of this? And we can. We can pull, we're skipping this one, so I'm going to move my work down through there. We can pull a 3 out. We have 2y squared plus 11y plus 5. All right? And I would go immediately log that 3 on your answer blank or drop it down below here. All right? And I'm going to multiply for a 10. I'm going to recognize I'm going to break it into 10 and 1. And so I'm going to have my 2y squared plus my 10y plus my 1y plus 5. And again, just so you can see the organization of it, I really haven't changed the value. I've broken 11 into 10 and 1. And now I'm going to group and group. Out of the first group, I'm going to factor out a 2y, leaving a y plus 5. Out of the second group, nothing comes out, which means it's prime, and I can only factor it into 1 in itself. And again, I've got my common group of y plus 5, and what's left is 2y plus 1. And don't forget about the 3 that you factored out at the beginning. So y plus 5 times 2y plus 1. Number 30 is the easiest kind we had for factoring, if you recognize it. It's the difference of squares. So remember, when we break those up, we say, well, you're x times x, and you're 2 times 2, and if I do one of each sign, the outside and inside cancels. Again, when you FOIL this, x squared plus 2x minus 2x, there they go, minus 4. Same with number 31. We've got a difference of squares here. 9x squared is 3x times 3x. 4 is 2 times 2, and to create that canceling of the middle term, we have 1 plus and 1 minus. And 32, I told you, you could skip. So down to the next one, the sandbox. This is one I would also like to have you star and do it again on a separate sheet. So we're doing volume, and we wrote volume is length times width times height. We are supposed to find those dimensions, and we gave you a hint to factor it. Well, number one rule with factoring, can you pull anything out? Yes, there's a 2, a 2, a 2, and they each have an x in them. When I put back in what I need, I need an x squared, an x, and a 12. Again, you can multiply that in to check it. Well, then I have to break this up. This one's not so bad. I don't have to do that big, long process because all I have to worry about when it leads in a 1 is this back door here. And can I get a negative 1? 2 and 6? No. 12 and 1? No. 4 and 3, yes, as long as 4 is a negative. Notice these have a product of negative 12, and they add up to negative 1. So let's break it apart. We had our 2x at the beginning. We said it's going to be x minus 4, x plus 3. Those are the three dimensions. This one could have been the length, maybe this one the width, maybe this one the height. Um, and you can FOIL it to check it. Number 33, we've got a cookie sheet. And I've been telling you when it gives you the area to write it in here so you know that you're going to be doing base times height or length times width to get your area. They gave you a width. Well, this one's really easy because we know that when we do length times width, and one of them they gave you right here, I need to get the area. They gave you that also. So when we organize this one, we don't even really have to focus on factory. Let's look at the one they gave me. If I'm going to do first and get a 3x squared, I must have led with a 3x. And if I'm going to do lasts and get a minus 5, it must have ended with a minus 1, and I'm done. So that is the length of the cookie sheet. How do I check them? I FOIL. I'm going to do that in black here. First, 3x squared. Outside, minus 1x. Inside, plus 15x. Lasts, minus 5. And you'll notice these combine to make that 14x. So I got the exact area I was supposed to get. We're almost done here. Or is that the last one? I believe I am done. So super. All those ones I starred, you should have done on a separate sheet of paper as we went through it. You should maybe even do another run through that again. Your test is exactly the same. We just simply change numbers, and we might have changed the word cookie sheet to something else. But there it is. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.